Hey everyone, so the time has come again. Uh, two weeks ago, I hit 500 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you all so much for that. And every 100 subs, I like to do a Q&A video. I used to wait one week, now I wait two weeks. And it's been two weeks, so now it's time to go back to that video and go through the comments to see what people have asked me. And again, these are very fun to do. Um, I always allow as many questions as you want. It can be pretty much anything, as long as it's not super personal or weird. And it, it's always great to see what people come up with. So we'll just get right into it. <clears throat> and again, thank you all so, so much for subscribing, watching my videos. Um, I'm finally getting to the point now where people are trolling me just because, which is usually more amusing than anything, but you know, the, more often than not, I, I, I get a lot of great support from people, so that's really awesome. So thank you all so much, and thank you for participating in this Q&A. And to the 54 subs, I think it is, that I got even since then, so that's always awesome. So the first set of questions comes from um, a long time um, subscriber and loyal supporter of mine, uh, Cynthia Sin. She says, Congratula congratulations, really proud of you. So happy for this achievement. Where's her questions? Oh, they're, they're further down. This is a separate comment, my bad. Sorry, well, thank you so much for that. Um, Another one is my friend, Sean, from Nocturnal Horrors. He asked, how was the Shining drive-in experience? I didn't get to go. Uh, yeah, um, up where I live, about, a couple, about an hour or so away, this summer they've been doing these horror film, classic horror showings at a drive-in, and a friend of mine's been going to them. I haven't been able to go, but he asked if I wanted to go see The Shining a couple weeks ago, which of course I wanted to. Times have been kind of rough for me lately, so I can't really go out and do stuff. But, you know, he was willing to take me, and the day of it fell through, and I didn't get to go see it. He even canceled himself. So I didn't get to go, which sucks. <clears throat> All right, so the question is from Cynthia Sin. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Question number one. Even though Blumhouse could have a few movies you consider, consider good or interesting, What's your opinion about that studio in general? Um, I think they've become a brand where they just, they pump out really cheap movies. It, especially for like Netflix and Hulu. A bulk of their um, cat, catalog is like for streaming services. It's kind of... I know a lot of what they do is so Netflix can have, oh... Only place you can see this. Hulu, only place you can see that. Their theatrical films technically are the best ones they've done. But when I think of Blumhouse, I think of films like Ouija, Paranormal Activity, um, ones like that. Yeah, they do have some good ones. But to me, I, I also think they're overrated. <clears throat> I hope that answers your question. Other than hor horror and mafia-related movies, which other movie genre do you enjoy? Um, genre, classic comedies. I mean, I of course, I'm a huge, huge fan of Monty Python. I love the 70s and 80s, like Zucker and Abrams and Mel Brooks films. You know, Zucker and Abrams... Uh, Airplane, Kentucky Fried Movie, Top Secret, uh, <clears throat> of course, Ghostbusters, Mel Brooks films like Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles, uh, History of the World. There's not really a genre that I'm really interested in other than horror and its subgenres and like mafia films. That's I mean, I guess you could say, like, courtroom procedurals I find interesting, but I don't watch them a lot. 
Number three, you, you told us before your top three Batman villains, Joker, Riddler, and Bane, but do you consider the Scarecrow as a well-produced character that can at least get close to your top three? Uh, Scarecrow is in my top ten, and Scarecrow is one of the oldest, most enduring villains in Batman's rogues. I mean, he's been around since 1940, Batman's first year and solo publication. Um, he's not a very strong villain. He does rely on his toxins a lot. But, you know, I, I do like the... Uh, and it's usually how he's presented. Like, the I, the way he's presented in The Long Halloween, for example, where it's just like this sort of really scrawny, scarecrow-looking figure on a horse. You know, it's kind of like Ichabod Crane. It's a... A lot of times he's a cool image. I mean, there's a lot of stories where he gets his ass kicked pretty quickly. <clears throat> I know a lot of horror fans like him because fear is his, you know, his thing. But yeah, Scarecrow is definitely in my top ten. Um, there's some stories that serve him justice more than others. I didn't mind him in Batman Begins. You know, you... In order to get Scarecrow right in film, you either got to go super serious and realistic like Batman Begins or just go full outrageous crazy like what would have happened if Batman Triumphant had been made by Joel Schumacher, which I'm glad it didn't. So I, I do like Scarecrow, whose real name is Jonathan Crane, because I know people are going to say that in the comments just because I didn't. <clears throat> uh, number four, what are your... I wish this fucking tablet would stop doing that. What? Are, uh, piece of shit. What are your plans with your Room 237 Reviews Facebook page? What would you like to post on that page? I originally created it as pretty much an extension of this channel. You know, uh, for myself, share newest videos, what was going to be coming up. So I wouldn't have to make like two minute videos like... Hey, so this is my marathon, next marathon, this is what's coming up next. Because you need like a lot of subs to do posts. So it was going to be for that, but um, I also created it, I know it's become more of a horror community page, which wasn't my intention, but, you know, I, I did it so people could, you know, share videos from the channel with other people like their favorite ones or give me feedback on what they would like to see or what they thought of you know different videos or whatever and pretty much just an extension or an, an alternate outlet for the channel that was what I hoped anyway number five other than Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi which other actors of the golden era of horror do you consider are worth watching um, <clears throat> well, of course, there's Lon Chaney Sr. and Jr. Uh, Conrad Veidt from the, the silent era. You know, he, Captain of Dr. Caligari, Hands of Orlac. He's the one that's in The Man Who Laughs. He's th the man who laughs. It's more of a drama, but because of how scary he looks, it's become known as a horror film. He's a very good, you know character actor of you know horror type films uh dwight fry especially i mean Dwight dwight fry i mean fritz and frankenstein renfield and um dracula he was also in bride of frankenstein as another assistant but dwight fry in as renfield is one of my all-time favorite and to me the epitome of a character who's a normal man who's been driven mad, you know, becoming a mad man. Dwight Fry was a great horror actor. I mean, he's had other credits, but he's known within the horror genre. Uh, Colin Clive, not quite sure what else he's known for outside the Frankenstein films, but he was great in the original and Bride of. Um... I would also say uh, Claude Rains. I mean, he was in The Invisible Man. He was in 1943's version of The Phantom of the Opera, which isn't 
as good as the Lon Chaney one, but he was great in The Invisible Man. So, just to give a few. <clears throat> if getting into the Silver Age, then you have Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, uh, uh, Michael Goh, a bunch of other ones. Hey, uh, number six. It's in parentheses, so I'm going to read it to myself first. I don't think that at all what you put it in, in parentheses. It's okay. I'm not going to say it out loud because she doesn't want me to. But <clears throat> If you were to introduce someone to films related to zombies, which five would you recommend? Funny you should say that because I actually just got ready for my top 10 favorite zombie films before I realized I had to do this. So I'm going to give... How do I want to do this? All right. Uh, you said five. I'll count those as one. One, two, three. I guess, uh, I guess I would do this. Of course, um, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. No, I'm just going to count George Romero's original Dead trilogy as one. Um, the Dawn of the Dead remake, Zack Snyder's. Lucio Fulci's Zombie. I would say Return of the Living Dead from the 80s. Just a good comedy. And, you know, where the whole brains aspect came from. And I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I consider the infected zombies. So 28 days later. I mean, there's obviously other great ones. Like Dead Alive is in my top 10 favorite films of all time. So I would say Dead Alive. But those would be my... And that's a random order. Just so no one knows what... uh what my top five are when I go for the countdown. <laughs> Thank you very much for being so nice and kind for all your hard work. I wish you the best and send you a big hug. Thank you so much for your question, Cynthia. I always look forward to your questions and your ever loyal support. Thank you so much. Next is from a good friend of mine, the explorer of horror, the horror boy himself. Before I ask my question, I just want to congratulate you on this achievement. It's cool to see my fellow horror friends grow and achieve achieve a lot. It's great. Your videos are extremely well done and really entertaining to, to watch. Thank you for the friendship, man. You're one of the best friend. You're one of my best friends. I'm so happy to see you reach this number of subs. Great work. That means a lot to me. It. Uh, I've never met anyone through like the internet where you know I've sent them a gift just because I wanted them to see something. You know, I sent him a collection of classic monsters because I got the box set. Always hitting each other up for hey, have you checked this out? It it's a great community that we built. A great way to you know. I think this is what social media was intended for, but it doesn't always work that way. So thank you for those kind words. He has eight questions, all right, which is great. What's the best horror film of the year for you? 2020? Oh, I, I gotta say The Invisible Man, hands down. I know there was a lot that didn't get released. Some people will call Invisible Man psychological thriller. Don't listen to him. It's a fucking horror film. It's a remake of a universal monster film. It's a fucking horror film. Two, what are your what are some of your favorite bands? I'm a huge grunge and hair metal guy myself. Um, well my fav lifelong favorite band is Iron Maiden. But, you know, I also love bands, you know, I love Black Sabbath, I love Dio. I I love death metal. You know, I also a big fan of Slayer. I'm a big fan of death metal, like Cannibal Corpse. I love a uh Aborted. I do like some deathcore. Yes. I love old Whitechapel. I love old Suicide Silence. I love Oceano. Despised Icon. Rose Funeral. Other death metal bands. I love Dying Fetus. Necrophagus. Um, Suffocation. That's the kind of music I like. 
But other favorite bands of mine that aren't metal in any way, you know, I love The Doors. Always been one of my favorite bands. Jim Morrison's one of my favorite lyricists and singers. Uh, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, The Who. I love singers like Roy Orbison and Johnny Cash. Uh, number three. Is there a figure you like to see get made for a horror icon? You mean like the kind of like like a McFarlane figure like I have? Um for a horror icon. I'm guessing you mean like a character like how there's ones of Freddy and Jason Leatherface. Uh good question. Uh I'm sure there's ones of the Universal Monsters. I mean, they've been around uh, I'm sure there's ones of those, but I'm not really sure. Probably, I'm guessing uh, one of the collector would be pretty cool. I know there's ones of uh, Victor Crowley. Um, I know there's ones of Ash. There's actually not too many of Herbert West. I know there is one that you can get, but I would love to see like like the McFarlane or NECA, uh, like the NECA series that I have of Herbert West. I think that would be awesome. Or more of, you know, the, the Creep from Creep Show. Probably something like that. Uh, number four. What's your least favorite Batman comic? Oh, Christ. <clears throat> um, s singular book, I'd probably have to say either All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder by Frank Miller or The Dark Knight Strikes Again by Frank Miller. I don't own Strikes Again, but I have read it. Uh, my least favorite run would have to be Tom King's run horrible representation of the character i know there's other bad ones that i haven't gotten to reading yet like fortunate son and odyssey but you know as run i'll say tom king book i'll say frank miller's all-star book and it is unfinished but it's pretty fucking terrible What's your thoughts on how they decided to end Batman Hush? I thought it was an unneeded twist. I didn't like it. I mean, they they do this every so often with an adaptation of Batman. They'll just fuck with it somehow. They they could have just lifted it straight from the book the way they did year one or even the killing joke. Minus that half hour short film in the beginning. And it would have been fine. I don't know why they did the twist they did. I mean, it's cool. I got to see something of, without giving it away, one of my favorite characters. Which, even in the comic, that same character is, you know, is sort of the one pulling the string. But they did have to fuse it the way they did. I, I didn't like the twist in, in the Hush movie. I thought the movie itself was good, but not that. Favorite horror posters? You mean like poster arts? Uh, well, I have, obviously it's a, a reproduction, of the 60s pop art um, Psycho cover. That's one of my favorites. Uh, love the one of Evil Dead. Uh original chainsaw massacre cover original halloween you know with the the hand the knife and the jack-o-lantern friday the 13th the original i actually have it right here that cover night of living dead i've always loved um maniac i love the cover for maniac um I love the dual cover of I Drink Your Blood and I Eat Your Skin. There's a lot. And I love 30s style 
you know, and Carl Lemley presents the Universal Picture, Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Dracula. I love those old covers. Those. What do you see happening with YouTube in the future as far as rules and the algorithm and the layout? Uh, who knows? Um, that was a pretty big debacle with COPPA at the end of last year. Um, I think they're going to keep getting more and more strict with you know, content, content violations, copyright violations. Um, it's going to become more and more... I'm willing to bet ad fueled. I wouldn't be surprised if they make people get accounts, like paid accounts, to watch shit. It. I don't want to say our days are numbered, but it's scary to think about. I I try to enjoy it now while I can. Do you think Hollywood will approve in the future? No, and unfortunately, it's not entirely Hollywood's fault. A lot of it is just the time we're living in. I mean, it's so easy to stream from your home. Like, people are more into serialized television now more than ever. I mean, people will pick a series on Netflix and binge that instead of going out to the theaters. Or films are now made for Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, hell, even Redbox. Movies are made for Redbox. It's, I mean, people are so into streaming now and, you know, uh, video on demand that they just wait for a film to come to their home that they don't, that, I mean, that's part of the reason why Scorsese, well, I mean, I know Netflix helped fund uh, The Irishman, which is a wonderful film, which I don't think I've even reviewed that yet. I meant to. Fuck. Oh, well. Um, it, it's not entirely Hollywood's fault. I would like to see there be a revival of Hollywood. I mean, if you watch Once Upon a, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Tarantino, it is kind of relevant to how today is with filmmaking and movie stars and directors. I, I think it's more so the time we're living in. Granted, Hollywood is given less of a shit now than they have in probably forever but anyway thank you so much can't wait to check out the Q&A man I, I hope I asked some good questions you did I always love these thought provoking ones alright next question is from Turner King what Jimmy Stewart films have you seen other than Rear Window and Rope uh, I saw Vertigo years ago I gotta rewatch it obviously I've seen um it's a Wonderful Life. I saw that as a kid around Christmas time. I actually didn't realize he was in Five Old Goes West, which I watched as a kid. I have most of the films he's done with Hitchcock, which if I haven't seen them, I'll get to them, so you don't have to tell me what I should check out. I'll get to them eventually. I do like Jimmy Stewart, especially his Hitchcock films. Uh, a lot of these I gotta check the comments to see <clears throat> uh, right, Jason Phillips uh, uh, new to comics one of the first channels that really helped my Batman reading order, just finished Dark Victory, liked and subbed. Glad you liked it. Uh, really glad you liked Dark Victory. That's one of my favorite comics of all time. That's another thing. I, I want to do more comic stuff because my Batman comic stuff is actually more my most watched stuff. Like Especially the how to start reading Batman. People really respond to it. Definitely, eh, Those are the ones I'm most proud of. Uh, Yella Bay Tai, my guy making moves. Thank you, Adrian Mendoza. Congratulations, thank you, Brian Lindsay. Congratulations on five hundred subs. It's well deserved. Hope you feel good about it, man. Love the channel. Love the consistent content. Keep it up. 
Here's many more subs to come. Thank you very much. Turner King again. Do you own and have you seen the 1997 movie Donnie Brasco? And have you seen Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? I do have Donnie Brasco. It was in my um, gangster film top 10 or collection video. I do have Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. I got it after I did my slasher review. I don't know if I'll review Donnie Brasco. I'm saving Dark Knight of the Scarecrow for October. What Jack Nicholson movies do you have? Um, other than The Shining, I don't have a lot. I have um, uh, One Floor with Cuckoo's Nest, of course. I've seen... Oh, other than those two and really just The Departed. That's all I own. Seen Chinatown, seen Easy Rider. Oh, and Batman. I have Batman. Seen the werewolf movie he did. Seen Hoffa. Oh, I also have a uh, fucking a Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, uh, the Terror with Boris Karloff. I think he was even in The Raven with Karloff. So, yeah. I mean, I, I know about his film. There's a lot more I've seen. Like, I've seen Anger Management, seen The Bucket List. I do like About Schmidt, but I don't have it. I haven't seen uh, As Good As It Gets. Yeah, don't worry about uh, recommending me any. Uh, I've seen a lot of them. I just don't own many. <clears throat> but thank you for your questions. A Metal Land Fan 2004 Backup. Here's my question. Have you seen Criminal Minds spinoff, Criminal Minds Suspect Behavior, and Criminal Minds Beyond Borders? I saw one of them. Didn't care for it at all. I like the original one. That's it. Same with CSI. I only like the Vegas one. Have you heard the British police procedural TV show Line of Duty? I've heard of it. Never seen it. Have you heard Nat Geo show Situation Critical from 2007 to 2008? Don't really watch Nat Geo. Have you heard the British sitcom Mind Your Language from 77 to 79? Heard of it but didn't watch it. From that time period, I think my favorite British sitcom was is Faulty Towers. But thank you for your questions. Uh, good friend of mine, Joe, uh, Jamaral81. Oh, thank you for your question. Congrats on 500 subs. Thank you very much. Question one. Have you seen Martin by George Romero, and are you curious about his lost film called Amusement Park? That will hopefully come out soon. I've seen bits of Martin. Uh, without buying it online, it's kind of hard to find. I... I know about it. I know what it's about. I've seen clips. Haven't seen it start to finish. I have heard of Amusement Park. Uh, I don't think it will come out soon, regardless of what articles say. I mean, it's always up in the air, but it, it, I am very curious. I know he's a guy that always had a very hard time getting films greenlit. His remakes were always able to get made, which is frustrating. Two, what are your overall thoughts on the DCEU so far? Uh, the DCEU is dead, and I'm glad. I do not like the Zack Snyder films. I thought they jumped the gun way too fucking soon to catch up to Marvel. Um, they're doing what they do best right now. Solo films. I mean, I liked Wonder Woman. I liked Aquaman. I liked Shazam, which... If you had told me a few years ago that that would happen, that I liked those three films more than a Justice League or a Batman v Superman film, I would have laughed in your face. Even Joker, which for saying it's not comic accurate, go fuck yourself because it's not meant to be. It's meant to be an Elseworlds film. I did a Defending the J Joker film video. I know most of you this doesn't apply to, but there are some people, well, it's not, he doesn't have the purple suit. He doesn't have the razor cards. It's acid flower. Well, it's not supposed to. Else, solo films and Elseworlds films will work. That's DC's strong point. That's what they should continue doing. I even look forward to Wonder Woman 84. 
not so much the Harley Quinn film, but... And while we're on that subject, people throw a garbage and trash a little too loosely. Cut this shit. Not every comic book movie that comes out just because it's a little too different doesn't mean it's trash and garbage. Get over yourselves. Uh, do you like Chris Duckman? Uh, yes. Usually, um, if I'm looking for a review on a film, he's always for, um, like one of the first ones to pop up. I always check out his reviews. What first got you into Jallos? Um, I think it was just getting into Italian films. Because I got into Fulci and Argento first, like Zombie, Suspiria, City of the Living Dead. And then I uh, I got into them first, and then I heard of the Jallo, <clears throat> which, which, you know, I heard was the progenitor of slashers, built more on mystery. So I checked, you know, I think I even saw, like, opera without fully realizing it was a Giallo, or that's what it was called. I had also just got Torso, because I thought it was just a classic film, a classic horror film. And then I realized they were examples of Giallo, so I looked more into the genre Giallo, and that's where I am today. You know, I would probably say uh, I got into Bava's a little bit more later, I always liked Argento's Jallos more than Fulci's. That's obvious. But yeah, it was more so be getting into slashers and then sort of seeing those films because of the directors. Do you like punk rock? Not entirely. Um, I do like the Sex Pistols. Uh, I guess some Stooges, but never been much of a punk fan. Do you like Star Wars? I can watch the original trilogy. I really like Empire Strikes Back, but I, I, I actually haven't seen the prequels or the newer films, any of them. Just was never really big into Star Wars. Do you care about Scream 5 and another Evil Dead movie without Ash? Uh, Scream 5, no. Let Scream 5 die. Let Scream die, finally. Evil Dead without Ash... It depends on how they do it. I mean, do I like the idea of it? No. But I do like the remake very much. It can be done. It really can. Um, you know, especially since the remake reboot went back to its horror roots. Yes, the original film was straightforward horror without the comedy. The comedy wasn't intentional, at least. So, don't. Um... It can be done. I mean, if he's producing it and Sam Raimi, if those two are at least producing it, I'll see anything Evil Dead. Will I be apprehensious? Or, you know, you know will I have my uh, apprehensions of it? Absolutely. Has it been harder to buy movies since COVID-19 started? Um... Kind of, the store I go to was closed down for a while, and I don't buy online. I actually haven't really bought any movies for a while, uh, which is fine. Things aren't going great right now anyway. Uh, do you like Mellow Yellow, like Rambo Rat for Life? Not really. I've never liked citrusy soda. It's kind of too sweet. I actually don't even drink soda. I always just drink uh, a ginger ale. Aside from horror and gangster movies, what other genre of movies do you like? Uh, genres, I mean, I like classic comedies, courtroom procedurals. Uh, one I did forget was Cynthia Sin asked me. I like boxing movies. Raging Bull, The Fighter, Million Dollar Baby. So not, not sports movies, but specific, uh, overall, specifically boxing movies. I do like those, especially true story ones. What was your worst movie theater experience? Um, well, I think the worst movie I ever saw was probably Ring 2. And I don't remember much of that at all. But honestly, probably the Evil Dead remake. Because there was a lot of people 
talking and laughing. And it was, it was just kind of annoying. It, it wasn't the watching the film was great. I really liked the film, but the people around us, it it wasn't a very good experience. Do you know about the real life Cropsy killer? Yes, I've actually seen the documentary on him. Have you seen Lucio Fulci's mob crime movie called Contraband? No, I have. I've heard of it. Uh, looking into his filmography, I haven't seen it. Uh, I mostly just look out for his horror and giallo films. It sounded interesting. Uh, might be kind of harder to find. Maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Do you think theater will ever go away because of COVID? Uh, no, because there are a lot of people that still do go to movies. There are, you know, paid critics that still go to theaters. It still is, you know, a, a big, I mean, there's now Netflix and chill, but people still go to the movies. I don't think COVID will be around forever. Uh, I think, you know, I think it will actually be a big event when the theaters reopen and all these anticipated films do come out. But no, I don't think it will go away forever. Uh, thank you for all your questions. Uh, Tevia Smolka, congrats, man. Thank you very much. Jeremo Films, growing fast. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, can't wait to see how much faster it grows. Turner King again, how many movies do you own? And congratulations on 500 subscribers. 500 number than were 100 subscribers. How many movies? <sighs> well, I know I have somewhere between 650 and 700 horror movies alone. And I've probably got somewhere around 100 other films of assorted varieties, dr comedies, dramas, mobster films. I've probably got somewhere between eight and 900 films overall. I know I have between 650 and 700 horror films at least. Overall, I'm not entirely sure. All right, getting down to the bottom. Oh, going on a little longer than I thought. Uh, Darkness Demon 8, congratulations on the Patreon. Oh yes, I started a Patreon, Room 237 Reviews. Uh, number one, if you were to make a horror movie, what would the first type of horror movie you'd make? Um, either a slasher or a classic monster movie. And maybe not really a slasher, but if it, either a slasher or just like a psycho type. And not like Psycho Psycho, but just like a serial killer movie. Or like a classic monster film. Try to make it, you know, and if I do that, I would aspire for it to look something like uh, Night of the Living Dead or Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. It would probably be a classic monster movie or like a slasher or a serial killer film. Or even a silent film. Uh, are you a cat or a dog person? I'm allergic to both, highly allergic to both. Um, I do like both. I do like animals. I'm just allergic to all animals. Sorry, something just popped up. Uh, what's the first horror movie that scared you as a kid? Well, the only movie that ever gave me nightmares as a kid, which, give me a break, I was three years old, was a, a Leprechaun. I saw it at my cousin's house. I don't even remember watching it, just glimpses of scenes I remember. Don't remember the nightmares at all, but I I remember my parents telling me that that gave me like thrashing, screaming nightmares. Um, I was scared a lot as a kid, but as I watched a film, I sort of became less afraid of it. I, so I, I'd probably say Leprechaun when I was three which was probably my earliest exposure to anything horror or being scared. 
But thank you for your questions. All right, uh, Sandra Mulder. Uh, who's your favorite Batman writer? Uh, favorite, like, right? Well, uh, actual Batman writer, I would say Scott Snyder. My favorite comic writer, he's done a Batman book, but he's not really a Batman writer, would be Alan Moore. But S Scott Snyder's my favorite Batman writer. Would you like The Long Halloween to be a movie? No. Um, only if they do a two-part, make it R-rated if possible, animated film like Dark Knight Returns. If they do Dark Knight Returns with Long Halloween, then yes. And make it dark and gritty. Like if Seven was an animated film, sure. I don't want to see, and yes, I know the Pattinson film, which again, if, if you're saying the suit is shit just because you can see his chin, you're looking for shit to bitch about. Stop trolling. I know they're going to put elements of Long Halloween in it. I know the Dark Knight has a lot of Long Halloween in it. But we haven't had a live action adaptation, and I don't think we're ever going to get one. Um, DC isn't really known for making live action adaptations. We've never had a live action adaptation of any Batman story. No, we haven't. <laughs> We've had elements of stories put in live action films, never an adaptation. Um, I would not like to see Hollywood. I mean, not that it would ever happen. We're not going to get a live action adaptation. Um, which is good. I don't want to see Hollywood adapt it. I mean, the closest we've had would be Batman Begins with Year One, which is still very different. I would like to see Long Halloween if it is a two-parter animated film like Dark Knight Returns. That would be incredible. His last one is, what's your favorite Batman era? I would say post-crisis. That's the one I'm most familiar with. That's the one that... Um, you know, when I think of Batman's history, I think of post-crisis, 1986 to 2011. Because in comics, eras don't go by, you know, decades or whatever, like horror, like films do. It goes by pre-crisis, post-crisis, uh, New 52 or post-Flashpoint. I like... Uh, New 52, the, the Scott Snyder stuff, I like it very much, but the post-crisis Batman is what I think of when I think of Batman. Thank you for your questions. Alright, then uh, sh last question is Sharon077 Shaza asks um just wanted to ask if you'd seen Requiem for a Dream. Saw it this weekend and wondered if you've seen it. Um, yes, I have seen it. Uh, I really like it. It's a film I enjoy very much. In fact, Requiem for a Dream is the example I use because that movie has scared me being in recovery. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Uh, the last 15 minutes of that movie scares me and freaks me out more than m most horror films I've ever seen in my life. So when people bring up films that aren't horror, but they're like, well, to me, it's a horror film. I think it's horror. It scared me. Therefore, it's horror. It's like, well, opinions don't make genres. I mean, genres are what they are because that's what films are. Uh, Requiem for a Dream is the example I use. You say, well, that film freaks me out and scares me more than most horror films. And I can't call it horror. It's a drama. Or like maybe even a little bit of thriller, but it's a drama. I really like it. Um, not my favorite Jared Leto film. I love Ellen Burstyn in it. Ellen Burstyn was great. Uh, it's probably my favorite Aronofsky film. It feels the less pretentious. I love the score. The editing, I mean, it, you, it, it is one of those just emotional you know, experiences for a film. At least it was for me. I love Requiem for a Dream. But anyway, all right, uh, 45 minutes. Wow. Um, this was a great Q&A. I hope you all 
you know, I hope I answered your questions uh, satisfactorily. Wow, brain fart there. But, uh, yeah, we're almost at 600 subs again, and I'll do another two weeks. And I love doing these. I love seeing what people will ask. Uh, I never read these beforehand. I like to, you know, I like to be surprised on camera with what they ask. Um, every video, people get more and more thought-provoking questions, which I'm very happy for. And, yeah, this is one of my favorite parts of this channel, is the 100-sub Q&A. But I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. I, I hope for you, is it just as exciting as it is for me to see the next question? Like, what's the next question going to be? But, yeah, this was the 500-subscriber Room 237's Q&A. Thank you for watching. Oh, oh, oh.